Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A3 from Putnam 1989. So here's the question. Prove that if a complex number Z satisfies this uh, equality, then absolute value of Z is equal to 1. So at this point you may want to pause the video, think about the problem, spend some time working on the problem, and then come back and watch the rest of the video. And as usual, I'm going to go over the thought process by which I obtained the solution, which means not everything we're going to talk about is going to uh, be helpful in a solution, but I'm going to present some ideas. Some of them are going to be helpful in solving this problem. Some of them may be helpful in other instances. So the first thing that I did was I looked at the coefficients. I found some sort of symmetry between the coefficients. I saw that the 10i is symmetric on the two sides. The coefficient of z to 9th and z are kind of symmetric but these two are not exactly symmetric one of them is 11 the other one is negative 11 so I thought is there a way I can find other solutions given one solution Z so one thing you could do is if the coefficients are completely symmetric when Z is a solution 1 over Z is also a solution and I have a separate video on that and you may want to check out I'm going to put the uh, link in the description and also at the upper right corner of this video so I was hoping that I can find other solutions to this one thing you could do is if you could take the conjugate of all sides uh, conjugate of both sides so you get 11 Z bar to the 10th plus 10 i bar z bar to the ninth plus 10 i bar z bar minus 11 equals 0. If z is a solution, this would also be equal. Uh, now, what happens is when you take the negative, uh, when you take the conjugate, i becomes negative i, and this i becomes also negative i, so it actually changes the equation. So if you think about this a little bit further, you realize that negative z bar would also be a solution. So what does that mean? It means if I plug in z bar into the original equation, let's do that to see what we get. We get 11 z bar to the 10th plus 10 i z bar to the 9th plus 10 i z bar minus 11. This is not necessarily equal to 0, but if you plug in negative z bar into the original equation, what you end up with is this. You get 11 z bar to the 10th minus 10 i z bar to the 9th minus 10 i z bar minus 11. Now let's take the conjugate out. You get 11 z to the 10th plus 10 i. Conjugate of negative 10 i is plus 10 i. z to the 9th plus 10 i z minus 11. All of that is conjugated. And that if z is a root of the original equation, this would also become 0. So what does that mean? It tells us that if z is a root, then negative z bar is also a root. Okay, so that's one thing that I noticed. Next, I was trying to find out if there are other roots that I can find, because given this, I wasn't able to completely solve the problem. And again, because of the symmetry, you can plug in 1 over z. However, 1 over z would not work. If you now plug in 1 over z bar, we get 11 times 1 over z bar to the 10th plus 10i 1 over z bar to the... If we go back and look at what we had, it would be 1 over z bar to the 9th plus 10i 1 over z bar and then minus 11. This becomes, I'm going to take the common denominator of z bar to the 10th. So basically I factor 1 over z bar to the 10th. I will get 11 plus 10i z bar plus 10i z bar to the 9th minus 11 z bar to the 10th. Now if I take the um, take the z bar and put it over everything, I get 1 over z bar to the 10th 11 minus 10 i z minus 10 i z to the 9th minus 11 z to the 10th all of that is going to be uh, conjugated now if i take in fact uh, if i factor a negative sign i will get negative 1 over z bar to the 10th and if i rewrite these i will get 11 z to the 10th plus 10 i z to the 9th plus 10 i z minus 11 and everything 
must be conjugated. But z was a root, so this would be 0, which means what I got is this. What I got is if z is a root, then 1 over z bar is also a root. So I got two things. I got z bar is a root, and I also got 1 over z bar is a root. And this didn't really help all that much. So if you have z is a root, you will get 1 over z bar. 1 over z bar is z over magnitude of z squared. Now if I apply the same thing again to this one, I will get 1 over conjugate of that, which goes back to z. So this is not very helpful. And if I take its conjugate, I will get, uh, if, I, if I take negative its conjugate, which is what I had here, in the beginning I had negative z bar, I will get from here, I will get negative 1 over z, which is negative z bar over absolute value of z squared. And that also doesn't really help all that much. So none of these really helped all that much. So I thought, well, maybe I will have to go back and just like do something more elementary and uh, see if I can evaluate the uh, absolute value of z. One thing that we know is that absolute value of z squared is z times z bar. So I'm going to rewrite the original equation. So let me go back and rewrite the original equation. I have 11 z to the 10th, 11 z to the 10th, plus 10 i z to the 9th, plus 10iz minus 11 is equal to 0. I was trying to create things that are similar. So if I factor z to the 9th from here, I will get 11z plus 10i. And on the other side, I will get 11 minus 10iz. Now I took the conjugate of both sides so that I can use the fact that zz bar is absolute value of z squared. So if you take the conjugate, you get absolute value, we get z conjugate to the ninth, 11z bar minus 10i is equal to 11 plus 10i z bar. Let's multiply these. Z, z bar is absolute value of z squared. Raised to the ninth, that's absolute value of z to the eighteenth, multiplied by 11z times 11z bar, that's 121 absolute value of z squared. 10i times negative 10i, that's plus 100. And then the rest of it becomes 110i multiplied by z bar minus z. That's the left side. Equals 121 plus 100 absolute value of z squared and then plus 110 Um, i z bar minus z. That's exactly what we get on the right. Okay, so we have similarities here. This guy and this guy are similar. Now, let's take a look at what we had. Let's take z to be a plus b i, where, of course, a and b are real. And let's see what these two sides are. So simplifying, we get 121 absolute value of z to the power of 20th plus 100 absolute value of z to the power of 18th minus 121 so I'm taking this guy and this guy to the left minus 100 absolute value of z squared and that's equal to so z bar minus z is negative 2bi so that becomes 220b and then the other side will be minus, this is also negative 2bi. So z bar is a minus bi. z bar minus z is negative 2bi. So if I plug it in there, I get 2bi times i, that's negative 2b. And then it has, an, it has a negative sign, so we get to, uh, 220b and there's a there's a factor of z to the power of 18 so I will get minus 220 absolute value of z to the power of 18. If I factor 220 and there was also a b here if I factor 220 I get 1 minus absolute value of z to the power of 18. On the other side I will have 121 
absolute value of z to the power of 20 minus 1 plus 100 absolute value of z to the power of 18 minus absolute value of z squared and that's equal to and I had a b here 220 b 1 minus absolute value of z to the power of 18 now I noticed that there's a if I plug in absolute value of z equals 1 both sides are going to be 0 which is what we expected because what we wanted to show was that absolute value of z is 1 so now let us just assume that absolute value of z isn't 1 I can divide off everything by absolute value of z squared minus 1 because I can factor absolute value of z to the power of 20th minus 1 as absolute value of z squared minus 1 times absolute value of z to the power of 18 plus absolute value of z to the power of 16 etc. Here I'm using this identity. I'm using the identity that a to the power of 10 minus b to the power of 10 is equal to a minus b times a to the ninth plus a to the eighth b etc all the way to a b to the eighth plus b to the ninth so i'm using this identity i'm using defense of nth powers and absolute value of z to the power of 18 minus absolute value of z squared can be written as absolute value of z squared times absolute value of z to the power of 16 minus 1 now on this side I can again factor I get absolute value of z squared times absolute value of z squared minus 1 times absolute value of z to the power of 14 absolute value of z to the power of 12 all the way to absolute value of z squared plus 1 and on the right side I can also factor 1 minus absolute value of z to the power of 18 as 1 minus absolute value of z squared times 1 plus absolute value of z squared plus absolute value of z to the power of 16. If I divide by absolute value of z squared minus 1, here's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get 121 times absolute value of z to the power of 18, absolute value of z to the power of 16, all the way to absolute value of z squared plus 1. Here I'm assuming that absolute value of z isn't 1, plus 100 the next term was absolute value of z c to the power of 18 minus absolute value of z squared, so this term. I'll have to divide by absolute value of z to the power of z squared minus 1. Then I will get absolute value of z to the power of 16 plus absolute value of z to the power of 14 all the way to absolute value of z squared. That's equal to minus 220b. The other side was 1 minus absolute value of z squared. That's why I have a negative sign. And then multiply it by absolute value of z to the power of 16 all the way to absolute value of z squared plus 1. I wanted to somehow show that this equality does not hold. So I realized that the left side, the top side, uh, starts with the larger powers of z and the right side, the bottom side, uh, starts with the smaller powers of z. So I thought I probably would be able to show that the top side is more than the bottom side if absolute value of z is more than 1. Now I was actually able to use what I had found before, which was if z is a root, so if you go back and look at what we did, if z is a root, so is 1 over absolute value of z. So absolute value of z is 1 over um, absolute value of 1 over z bar. So one of these two would have absolute value of z more than 1. So if absolute value of z is less than 1, then absolute value of 1 over z bar, which is also a root, is uh, greater than 1. So uh, since 1 over z bar is also a root, we may assume absolute value of z is more than 1. Okay, so now let's look at the two sides and let's see if we can show the top side is greater than the bottom side. One thing to notice is that z is a plus bi and absolute value of z squared is a squared plus b squared. So what does that mean? It means b is less than or equal to 
absolute value of z. In fact, absolute value of b is less than or equal to absolute value of b, which means if I look at the bottom side, which was negative 220b times absolute value of z to the power of 16, all the way to absolute value of z squared plus 1, this is less than or equal to 220 absolute value of z times absolute value of z to the power of 16, all the way to absolute value of z squared plus 1. And this can be written as 220 absolute value of z to the power of 17, absolute value of z to the power of 15, all the way to absolute value of z. Now I'm going to use AMGM for the top uh, expressions. So I have 121 absolute value of z to the power of 18 plus 100 absolute value of z to the power of 16. Those are the first terms of the top. So I'm looking at this term plus this term. 121 absolute value of z to the power of 18 plus 100 absolute value of z to the power of 16. Okay, so I'm going to break it up into 21 absolute value of z to the power of 18 plus 100 absolute value of z to the power of 18 plus absolute value of z to the power of 16. This is greater than or equal to 21 absolute value of z to the power of 18 plus using AMGM on these two we get 200 absolute value of z to the power of 17. Just to remind you AMGM was a plus b is greater than or equal to 2 root ab. Square root of the product of these two is going to be absolute value of z to the power of 17. And this is, of course, greater than 221 absolute value of z to the power of 17 since absolute value of z is more than 1. So I was able to show that the first terms are going to give us something more than the first term of this guy. Now we're going to apply the same thing for the next term. So the next term would be 121 absolute value of z to the power of 16 plus 100 absolute value of z to the power of 14. That will be more than 221 absolute value of z to the power of 15. And we're going to repeat that 121 absolute value of z to the power of 4 plus 100 absolute value of z squared, which is the last term of the top, that will be more than 221 absolute value of z to the power of, it would be the average of these two, which is cubed. So if we go back and look at the terms, we will see that, in fact, here I have the last term, the, the term right here, 121 absolute value of z to the power of 4. I added that to this term, which is absolute value of z squared, times 100, and that will give you the term right, uh, the term right here. Okay, so this is the next inequality. So what I'm left with is 121 times absolute value of z squared plus 1, which is by AMGM greater than 242 absolute value of z. And in fact, if you add these up, you will get that one side is greater than the other side. So the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. Because adding up these, these terms, we get adding up these terms, we get something that is more than, uh, and also including this, we get something that is more than the right-hand side of the equality, which means uh, we cannot have that absolute value of z is not equal to 1. If you like this video, I have a lot of videos like this on my channel. Feel free to check those out. I will see you in the next video.